This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He is the host of the very popular Ramsey Network podcast called The Fine Print where uh, we teach you to read the fine print because you know the rule there is if you don't, you get screwed. And uh, George shows you all that. Uh, episode uh, or season one is in the books, uh, working on episode or season two coming out soon uh, before you know it. And, um, man, we got some. there's a lot of people out there that uh, need information, so George is here to help. Today we're going to be talking about your relationships, your mental health, your job, your career, and of course your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Gary's with us in San Diego to start off this hour. Hey, Gary, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, George. Great to talk to you. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. What's up? I've got a two-part question. The first is uh, about incorporating um, uh, sinking funds into the Every Dollar app for for budget. When you do a sinking fund versus just having a fluctuating budget. And the second is about market stability. So, um, uh, Baby Step Seven uh, EDM uh, make way more than I spend monthly. And I'm, I, my wife and I have been using Every Dollar inconsistently, but we're really focused now. And there's uh, things like. Um, uh, car insurance, things like that, um, property taxes that are several thousand dollars that I'm wondering, do you, do you set those aside monthly in your budget? Or if you have the money, do you just do it every six months or every, every year? So that's the first part of my question. And then secondly, I know you're friends with um, Glenn Beck, and he's talking a lot about this great reset and, and everything. I'm wondering if you have any concerns over the market and alternate strategies like he does. Do, do you have crazy friends? <laughs> i've got a few crazy friends glenn's one of them i love glenn and he's completely out on a plank i mean he, he does this every two or three years he predicts the end of the world and um i made a rule when i went on radio i'm not going to predict the end of the world and if glenn's going to predict the end of the world he and i are going to be friends that disagree so no I, I don't think that the uh, world is coming to an end um uh you know if it does then it will but i'm not gonna i'm not adjusting my investments and i never have in any of the crises and the geopolitical upheaval that there has been i've always just kept investing and kept investing and kept investing and those are the only ones that get hurt on a roller coaster are those that jump off in the middle of the ride so george what uh, about well, sinking funds well i was just going to mention on that part on top of uh, not getting hurt on the ride you also kept your sanity and that's an important part of this well, equation. You're, you're suggesting maybe Glenn didn't. No, I'm kidding. We love Glenn. I'm kid We joke Big all the fan. time. He is a great guy. He's a wonderful person. I mean, I really like him. Uh, but he just he gets crazy sometimes, man. And this end of the world prediction stuff is one of those times. So I sleep better at night with that. Yeah, he to worry he about went that. off on the gold run a few years ago, getting everybody on the gold. And of course, you know I don't do that. So I got a lot of friends that I really love them and respect their intellect, but disagree with their ideas. And yeah. so that's all this is. Sinking funds. Let's talk about that. I'll tell you how I do it in my personal every dollar budget, and Dave can tell me I've been doing it wrong all these years, but I have a I have a whole category called funds. That's wrong. No, I'm kidding. I, I just list them all out, and I divide it by 12. So I pay all my insurance premiums yearly because it saves money, and so if it's 600 bucks, I go, all right, we got to put 50 bucks in that sinking fund category every month, and that's going to get set aside in my account so that when that time comes, the money comes out, and I didn't bat an eyelash. Here's... The, the sinking fund are little miniature savings accounts to cover Christmas because it comes every year in December. They don't move it. So you got to get ready, right? It's the old Christmas club account. It's just built into your budget is all. Now, Gary, I do want to – that's exactly how I would do it 99% of the time. I want to acknowledge, though, that you said you're an everyday millionaire. You have a huge income. You're completely debt-free on Baby Step 7. So you've got substantial cash flow. What's your household income? So um, it's different this year. So I, I'm uh, retired, and my um, take-home retirement guaranteed income uh, gross is fifteen thousand a month, and I have a, a okay. A so if you career. have a if you have a four thousand dollar item that pops up once a year, you just put it in your budget, right? 
so yeah, you that don't was have to question. save do up. I, do I need to you don't have to save up for Christmas making fifteen thousand dollars a month. You can just go freaking buy Christmas. Right? Got it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. You put that in the budget. That's what you do when you get to this level. Now, the the purpose of having the sinking fund is not to nerd out on every detail. It's to not have an expense sneak up on you that leaves you without food money that month. Because you got, oh my God, I gotta pay my property taxes. I have no money and I haven't saved up any to get ready and they're due, you know. But in my case, you know, we're obviously baby step seven people too. And so I don't have a sinking fund for my property taxes. I just write a check when it comes up because I can fit it into my income like you can, Gary. And so you don't have to do the sinking fund. But if you've got something that's big enough that you experience an ouchie, you know, it's like, ah! When that, when that hits in your monthly budget, then you probably should have saved up some to get ready for it with a little miniature named savings account. We call them sinking funds. And it helps to know when those are coming up because sometimes you're like, I don't know when my premium comes out every year. So yeah. it's good to have that and have the dates. But like you're saying, you've got a buffer in the checking account when you get to a place like Baby Step 7. But until you're out there like that, I mean, when you're in Baby Steps 1 through 6 and all and you're still fighting to pay off the house, you're, you're still – you're not running with – big lumps of cash laying around. I mean, you've, you're running it. All those, ca- all those dollars have names, and they're going everywhere. You need to use sinking funds in that case. Absolutely. Always. And the classic one is, oh, I had to run Christmas on a credit card because I forgot it was in December. You know, and it snuck up on me. Like, they move it. They don't move it. So that's that's what that's about. But, um, but man, you've obviously done a wonderful job. Congratulations, Gary. Very that's well amazing. done. Michelle's in Seattle. Hey, Michelle. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi there. Thank you so much for taking my call. It's an honor to speak with you. You too. What's up? Well, we <laughs> we are going to retire in the next seven-ish years. My husband's a firefighter, so we have a pension. We're very lucky. Um, and we just had the opportunity to sell our house for about 1.1, which is crazy pants in this area. Um, we only owe about 500. So we're kind of thinking that we should take this opportunity right now. And even if we need to rent for the next five to seven years, then at least we can pay off all of our debt, which is about $120,000. What's your household income? About 175,000 and we feel like we have no money. It's really sad. Yeah. Well, you get on tight budget and get your debt paid off. No, I wouldn't sell your house. I mean, it's a $1.1 million house is not a, a super expensive house in Seattle. I mean, it's a really? nice it's a nice house, but it's not a $10 million house. It's not a hard house no, well, to sell. About- You'll be able to sell that house in seven years when you get ready to sell it, and you will have lost out on all the appreciation between now and then. Okay. I think you can pay off your debt with the income you have. Yeah, you're going to stay the course. Get on your tightened budget here and beans and rice and let's get this stinking budget. <laughs> you may need to sell your car, but I wouldn't sell my house unless you hate your house and want to move anyway. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine. But selling it because the market's hot, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't do that unless you've got a very unusual property and, you know, you're needing to walk out of it. And this is a great time to do that. But this this is not 1.1 million in Seattle is not like crazy. You can get that. That's Nah, I, I think you need to tighten up your budget, sell your car, maybe. This is The Ramsey Show. Life is full of firsts. First and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. is important. It's actually more precious than money. It's more precious than shiny toys or getting a certificate at work. 
And like spending money from an account when you don't know how much is in there, we never know how much time we have left. So if you could do one thing that would make the time you have left worthwhile, would you do it? Well, of course you would. You got to make that dash between the two numbers on the gravestone count, right? Hey, we get that. And we want to help you do everything you can to be well. That's why we're partnering with BetterHelp. And we're going to give you a month of free one-on-one weekly therapy when you pre-order a copy of John Deloney's new book. Dr. John Deloney's new book is Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And your free month of one-on-one therapy is a part of pre-ordering the book. The book comes out in April, and we always have a bag of goodies that go with a book launch to get you to order them pre-order. And we bribe you to pre-order them because it helps with our marketing. And this is the biggest bribe we've ever done. It's pretty incredible. It's a great deal. For a $20 book, you get better help for a month included. Wow. And, of course, you get the ebook and the audio book, too. And the audio book, the first chapter is out on Deloney's uh, podcast. I listened to it the, yesterday. Yeah, and it's, released uh, that for free. As voiced by the author. And he didn't do a bad job. He's got a good voice. He's got a He's got a passable voice. Yeah. Yeah. It's usable. Kind of a Batman vibe. It's usable. Well, he's always had a Batman vibe, but yeah, yeah the voice worked out and it's, you can listen to it. Some audio books read by the author shouldn't be. Yeah. Are you, you you're know. looking at me like it was a personal attack. No, there. I'm not. Okay. I'm just having a conversation just. with you, George. My gosh. You're so sensitive. Uh, I like to listen to your audiobooks while I You're read them. You're so yeah. You, thank you, George. And I'm highlighting you. every and word. You, and you and you and you yeah. You you and you do everything exactly right. Good. Get a gold Christ. star, including brown nosing. So uh, yeah, RamseySolutions.com. Own your past, change your future. Mike's in Buffalo. Hey, Mike. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. We greatly appreciate it. Sure, man. What's up? Um, well, I'll try to make this as, as, as quick as possible. Um, big fan of yours. Um, I, uh, I wish my life looked like I was a big fan of yours. Um, uh, basically the nuts and bolts of it right now is that we've got a, uh, a credit card judgment against us. The original debt was about 15,000. They're coming after us for about 20,000, um, after fees and interest, um, this is from uh, Discover, and um, I'm trying to figure out what to do. They're trying to, well, they're mistakenly saying that I'm earning about four times what I actually earn in order to try to take 10% of my income. Um, we've got a friend who's an attorney who's trying to help us sort through that and, you know, Save that off, but that's kind of a band-aid. We just recently got our tax return, which is about five thousand dollars, and um, you know we're trying to figure out what's the best thing to do with that given our current situation. Okay, uh, what's your household income? Um, well, my um, my wife brings in. Um, I forget exactly. It's around fifty thousand annually. I'm. Um, currently the stay-at-home dad. Um, I do work a couple of part-time jobs that don't make a ton. It's just basically, you know, to help with essentials and bills and How old are your you know, kids? little things here and there. I've got three. Uh, one is uh, eight, one's five, and one's three. How'd you get this far behind? Uh, oh, boy. So a, a while back with that particular card, um, we had run some things up on it, like our honeymoon, um, paid it off with a, uh, a refinance on our house. How long have you been married? Was uh, close to 10 years now. Okay. We don't need to go all the way back to the honeymoon. How'd you get behind on your Discover card in recent history? Okay. Well, I mean, it wasn't recent. It was several years ago now. Okay. But, okay. That's fine. Um, all right. Here's what, that's we, why, that's what I was trying to, that's, the, that's the, what, the number I was trying to get. So we're good. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Um, number one, the discover card problem is not the problem. It's the symptom of the fact that your all's right. income is low in this house. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to have to make some different decisions on careers. Long term. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah, you're going to have to. You don't have it, It's time. It's past time to figure it out. And this is a great time to be looking for is, a job and a great yeah. time to be getting a job. Both of you. Maybe your wife gets a better job. Maybe you get a job. I don't know. But we're going to have to do something here because you've got three little kids and you're living uh, considerably below the average household income in America in Buffalo, which is not a cheap place to live. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, we did get lucky on our house. We live outside of Buffalo. Don't try to talk yourself out of this, dude. You have an income problem. No, no, yeah. Okay. I don't and care I'm how lucky you got. Because, you didn't get lucky enough to pay your bills. Yeah. So, right. and, and part uh, of it is you got three mouths wife, to feed and you don't have a lot of money coming in. So we've got to get that going. We've got to get organized and get on a budget. We'll help you do all of that as well. Um, now, as far as dealing with Discover, here's the thing. Are you sure you're dealing with Discover? How, how, you're probably not. They probably have sold that debt, haven't they? Uh, I think so. Yeah. We were getting calls from some ah, okay. know, Good. agency so in New that's York what City I thought. or something like that. A debt it. that hasn't been yeah. paid on in this long. And they actually did sue you and actually did get a judgment, you're saying. That's That's what it looks like, yeah. Unless they're sending us just flat out and false, you know, information. Uh, but it looks like it's stamped by our, our local county sheriff's office. Okay, probably is. And I, I doubt they I doubt they'd go that far. So debt buyers yeah. on old credit card debt pay about a nickel on the dollar. Mm. Okay. And so they probably paid a thousand dollars for this twenty thousand dollar debt. So I would offer them five thousand dollars as settlement in full in cash. I don't have any more than that. I'm broke. I have three kids. We don't make any money over here. This is my tax return, and I will give it to you, but I will only give it to you. There's other people wanting this money. I'm, I got, I'm behind with everybody. I'm getting ready to go bankrupt. If you people, if I can't work this out, and I'm in, you know, and just really whine and play a bad country song in the radio right there in their ear about how bad your life is, and because it is, and I got $5,000, and you guys better take that while the getting's good, and you get it in writing from them that this is settlement in full, and then you wire them the money, no electronic access to your checking account. Do not give them any numbers of any kind. Do not give them where she works. Don't t give them any information. Make them find everything the hard way. But they'll settle this because they probably got a grand in the debt. They'll probably take the five and walk. They're not going to in one conversation. You're going to have to bow up and be have a little gravitas. All right. But you can, can do that. Can okay. that. Two rules. In writing, no electronic access to your checking account. Okay? Right. Now, that solves the immediate fire in the kitchen, but now we've got to figure out what, why we've been cooking with grease like this and what's causing this, right? So, yeah. uh, And you got to get down under this and fix the whole thing because you guys have been wallowing around in financial stress, and it's affecting how you feel about yourself. It's affecting your relationship and your marriage. Unless you're not a human, unless you're psychotic, it's affecting all of those things. It did when yeah. I went broke. Sharon and I about oh, killed yeah. each other. Yeah. Mike, do you have any other debt other than the credit card? Uh, yeah. I mean, we both have student loans. Um, we have a mortgage. We have um, one other card that's in collections for a much smaller amount. Um, it's closer to like five or six thousand. Um, but uh, they, you know, you know, they haven't mentioned anything for us on that. Um, and then we have a car loan that's around. I think there's something like seven or eight thousand left on it. Okay. Well, we're gonna get, we're gonna put you into Financial Peace University. And sign you guys up. You and your wife need to go through this together. If you can find a local church that's doing it, jump in there. If not, just do it online with us and get in some of the groups. Embrace every detail of that and assume, like I did when I went broke when I was 28 many years ago, assume that everything you're doing right now is wrong and you should be doing the opposite because right. your life sucks, that's man. But I don't want it. I, I want you to win. The last 10 years. Yeah, I want you to win. They and you've got to turn this payments. around. Yeah, so you hang on. We'll get you signed up. And, and you call me back if you need some more help. George and I will be here. We're going to be here for you. We're going to walk with you because it's scary as crud where you live right now. And I don't, I don't want you to be there anymore. I, I remember it. It's, it. it's not fun. And you can get there. You can win. You can turn this around. Check out a local church and get plugged in. Get your marriage going. Make sure you're getting your bills paid. Get this settled and get it out of your life. You can turn this around. We can show you how.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. This is The Ramsey Show. Brian and Jamie are with us in San Bernardino, California. It says on my screen, you guys are debt-free. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Cool. How much debt did you pay off? We paid off $325,000 in uh, 29 months. Whoa. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started out at about 225000 and uh, last year, Brian doubled his income, so that's what... You broke up. Brian doubled his income in what? Brian, we started about 225000 and then last year, Brian did really well. He's in... So he did really well and doubled his income last year, which helped us pay off the debt. So, I'm sorry, your household income last year was to what then? Did... It went from two twenty five to four fifty. Yes. Okay. All right. So Brian is the only income. I'm getting it. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. Good. Way to go, guys. What in the world do you do for a living, dude? <laughs> I'm in sales, actually. Jamie. Jamie's uh, in the medical industry, so she also has a um, a career. Her occupational um, is in medical. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, so it was your household income four fifty. Did I get that right? Yeah. That wow. Was so what kind of debt was the 325? So we had um, we had uh, two cars that we had to pay off. We had a truck, my car, and then we also had an RV. And then our house is paid off as well. We just paid that off this morning. Whoa! Whoa. Talking to weird people. So what's, <laughs> what is this uh, California house worth? <laughs> what's the house worth? So right now, um, maybe... Hundred to eight fifty. Okay. Wow. Very nice. good. How old are you two? Uh, we're both forty. Way to go! And how much to get do you have in your nest egg and savings? So we did. That's where we we did do Financial Peace University, and we had savings. Uh, in order to pay off the house, I wanted it paid off today since we were calling you. So we did pull money out of savings to pay that off this morning. Mm -hmm. How much do you uh, have in your four hundred one ks and your retirement and that kind of stuff? Oh, all of that together, uh, 400. maybe 400000 So you're 40-year-old millionaires. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. I'm Did proud of you. Did you guys just you. figure that out? Please yeah, tell me you baby knew Baby Steps Millionaires. That's amazing. $50,000 house, 400000 That's a million two net worth. Yeah. Way to go. That's when you say it that way. Yeah, it's, well, that's the way it's said. Well done. Proud of you. <laughs> way to go, you guys. Amazing. And you make incredible money. You're doing so well. Congratulations. Thank, thank okay, what started you on this that whole... Was, that's a huge lifesaver for us. Okay. What, what started you on this whole Ramsey journey thing? So, Dave, I'm, I, I've listened to you for, God, 10 years over the, over the radio, but um, I've always told Jamie, hey, we should... We should look into this. You know, it'd be fun to kind of hear how to invest as millionaires going forward and getting that lifelong goal. So um, this came up with our church, and I said, you know, we should do it. And she was hesitant at first, and I said, it's, it's, I think it was $60 when we did it. Um, and anyways, we ended up doing that, and um, she, I kind of drug her through it. And the first day that she was in there, she's like, why are we doing this? We're not in debt. And then, oh, I was so mad. I said, we have no credit cards. We don't have any debt. All we have is our house and our cars. And the financial piece totally changed our mindset. And then you start looking at your bills, seeing how much you pay in interest. It was shocking. Jamie, so I'm confused. You got two car loans, and you didn't see that as debt, even though the payments were going to lenders every month. Talk to me about the right, mindset there. Correct. Because a lot of people say that. They call and say, Dave, I don't have any debt except for my cars. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's what we said. Yeah, the way to go. You guys, so how many classes into Financial Peace University, Jamie, before you flipped and said, okay, I'm not mad anymore? Oh, it was probably the third class. Yeah. But the first class, I still said, why are we doing this? This is such a waste of our time. Yeah. And it wasn't until they made us write down our debt, start a budget, when you really start looking at numbers. The reality hits you, and you go, oh, my gosh, he's right. We're broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you write down that you have $140,000 in debt, it's, it's, it's shocking. And 29 months later, house and everything is paid for. Yes. Way to go. How's that feel? Oh, we're in shock still. We recorded uh, us making that last payment this morning. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Well, congratulations. We're very proud of you guys. What do you Thanks. tell people the secret to getting out of debt in 29 months is? What do we tell them, you said? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to take financial peace. You have to do that snowball effect. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah, and also be on a budget. You know, I don't think we realized how much money was going out the door on a monthly basis versus what we were bringing in. And we were living, you know, as we considered comfortably, but um, the mindset that that class gave us to change our our viewpoints and just roll it down has now put us in an extremely good position going forward. Yeah. Wow. Pretty amazing. Way to go, guys. Whoop, Thank whoop, you. Whoop, whoop. I love it. So proud of you. You're incredible. <laughs> Very well done. All right. We're going to send you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires because you are one. Uh, maybe oh. you can pass that on after you read it and inspire someone else to do what you've done. I'm so proud of you. How Ordinary yeah. People Built Extraordinary Wealth, how you can too. It's a number one bestseller. We'll also send you the number one bestseller, Total Money Makeover. So you give that away and disturb someone's life. Let's create a holy ruckus together. Well <laughs> done, you guys. I'm proud of you. Very, very cool. Well done. All right. Brian and Jamie, San Bernardino, 325000 paid off in 29 months, making two and a quarter to over four hundred. 100% debt-free, house and everything, baby steps millionaires by the time they're 40. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. One, two, three. We're debt-free! Yeah! I love it. Well done, well done. Absolutely incredible. Very cool, you guys. Very cool. That is how it's done. Man. Three lessons in. That just for everyone to know, if you're taking FPU, the well, first sometimes lesson. Sometimes I hear the first lesson turns, turns them around, but it she was hardcore. If you got a bad attitude, it might take it two or three. She, 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 she was hardcore. I mean, she had the, the arms folded, you know, and the, the old uh, body language that says, I'm pissed and I don't want to be here, right? <laughs> and you start to let the hair down, the arms start to spread out. Yeah, you know, we go. can do this. this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can do this. I love it. That's so good. What a great story. Very, very well done, you guys. Michelle is with us in Miami, Florida. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Um, well, thanks to everything that you've taught, I am now on baby step four. I have a fully funded emergency fund, and I'm saving 22% towards retirement, and my house is paid off. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. So like George said to that last couple, I'm out of debt except for my car. <laughs> Whoa. Um, the only, I How know, in the, the world only do you have a paid for house and here. debt on your car? I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't, don't, don't beat me up for that. But um, the lease term is up in December, and my payoff amount is $22,000. Um, I just learned that the Kelly Blue Book trade in value is 27000 So I'd like to know. Should I pay off this car at the end of the lease term, or should I just cut my losses and go find another car? I'm sorry. I thought you said you could buy it for 22 and the value is 27. Yes, the that would not be cutting your uh, losses. I, that would be gaining. <laughs> I guess. If you I, turn the car in and went and bought like, one just like it, you'd have to spend 27, or you can pay this one off for 22. Is that right? That's right. Therefore, you're getting a five thousand dollar discount, which is unheard of in this market. In that, in that sense, so do you have the money to to buy it? Well, I'd have to eat into my emergency fund. Well, we're going to do that. What's your household income? Okay, I, I make forty one thousand. Oh no, I would uh, I, 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 I would buy the car and I would turn around and sell it. 
and get something cheaper. Make you a, make you a five thousand dollar profit, and uh, then get something that's less expensive. Making forty thousand, you don't, you don't need to be driving a thirty thousand dollar car. A lot of car for that. That's too much, too much, and things going down in value. I know they're not going down in value at this moment, but they will be soon again. It's used cars, and they always go down in value. So, no, no, I, I, I would I would make the five grand on it though, and flip it, and then move into another car at that point. And then never touch that again. Yes, ever, under any circumstances. This is The Ramsey Show. personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Adam is with us in Toronto. Hey, Adam. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how you doing, Dave? Good, man. What's up? Oh, nothing. Uh, well, I shouldn't say nothing quite a bit, but uh, just a little bit of a recap. Uh, back in 2016, my wife and I did, as you say, uh, stupid with zeros on the end of it. Uh, spent a lot, and uh, 2017 paid off about 65,000 bucks of debt in uh, 11 months. And I uh, never did end up getting down for a debt-free screen, but anyway, um, fast forward now, in the last, I guess, couple of years, COVID has kind of destroyed my industry there. I'm a pilot, and in Canada here, it uh, really took a bad hit. It's just kind of recovering now. And uh, so with the stress that that kind of brought about, it brought some uh, marriage issues uh, along with it. And uh, wife is in a really uh, bad spot right now. I guess we both kind of are. And um, is not sure if she wants to work on the marriage or what she wants to do. And we're kind of uh, in this uh, stalemate. But in the resulting kind of aftermath is that she's decided that she's going to spend however she wants to spend and kind of, uh, go back to, you know, she's saying we make too much money. There's no way I should have to have any restraint. And so uh, kind of spending about, oh, I'd say about $2,000 a month over what we make. And as a result of kind of depleted our emergency fund almost down to nothing, uh, she signed up for an elective surgery to the tune of about $10,000. And when kind of questioned on the timing of it, she just said, well, I'm either, either we fund it somehow through us or I'm just going to go get my own credit card and do it myself. And, uh, and so, but every time I bring up finances to her to, uh, to talk about it, uh, she says, you're obsessed with money. You've got to stop being so obsessed. But I'm trying to just bring her to the reality that we're spending more than we make. And we're kind of gradually bankrupting the family. You know, we've got four young children and uh, trying to, uh, you know, put money aside for them as well. And, and retirement now that we're kind of both kind of getting back on our feet, we do make good money, but uh, the reality is we're just spending way too much and she has no desire to even talk about it. She'll stonewall me every time I try to bring it up. And I'm worried that I'm going to tip her over the edge in the marriage if I talk too much about finances. But if I... Your, mar- your marriage is already like gone. A, well, yeah, it's the thing. It's if I, I feel like I'm kind of giving the drunk a drink. No, you're, you, didn't like you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Your marriage is already gone. Yeah, well, I mean, she she does give no. indications that she doesn't want to make it work. No, she doesn't. She does no, she She's doesn't. not ready to no, do it right no, now. No, 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 she doesn't. People that do the things and say the things that she's doing have no desire for this marriage to continue. Yeah. When you say things like, if you don't go, if you don't uh, pay for this $10,000, I'm just going to put it on a credit card. Screw you. You don't have a vote. This is not a marriage. This is not someone that has a marriage anymore that wants to work at all. And so what I would do if I were in your shoes is the two of you would say, I'm going to go see a marriage counselor. And it's either going to be with you on how we learn to get back on the same page and we have a future together that's going to include us both being grown-ups. And if you want to go with that, that's fine. If not, the marriage counselor is going to instruct me on how to bring this marriage to an end. Yeah, we have done some counseling. And she has come a couple times and just trying to get her to come back to it is the hard part. And she's very reluctant. Yeah, you're begging this woman to do stuff. Then she, you know, and she has no desire. She's obstinate. She's angry. And she's done. She's done. The marriage yeah. is over. Uh, I mean, it's it's tough to say that because she does say that she still does she, want to make She's it lying. Work. She, what she says is not what she's doing. And so that's lying. the problem. Yeah. And, and again, it, People it that want their marriage the to work do not behave the way that she is behaving. 
Yes, I would agree. Okay. So she's yeah, lying. And, uh, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Elective <laughs> surgery for $10,000 when you're broke and the family's in financial stress? That's so selfish and asinine, I can't even put words to it. Yeah, I know. That's that's kind of my thought, too. And well, no, it, is, that's, like, it just is. It's a fact. Yeah. It's not an opinion. Yeah. It's, mm. that, that is her screaming in your face that she's done. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I don't really like to think of it that way, obviously, because it's not a, a nice outcome for anybody in this, in this mess. And I think she I'm is, not sure she you was, did it. I think you're just the one that's no. going to admit it. Yeah. Now, I would agree with you going back a couple months that she was done. And however, she's had some influential people in her life in the last month or two that have helped bring her around. Her attitude has changed. Well, then that would involve would you guys getting in a good, getting with a good marriage counselor immediately. Yes. But that attitude has, needs to turn has, into action. Yes. And she has admitted that that is an option. I, I, I did confront her about it about a, a couple of weeks ago. And she has, I said, this is what I want to do. I had some referrals from the focus on the family. And she said, Yes, that is an option. And so I'm just kind of trying to not push her because she doesn't No, I am going to push her. It's not no, you don't option. understand. Yeah. You, you, it's time to push her. It's time to push you. The yeah. house is on fire. It's burning yeah. down around you. Get out of the house. Push somebody. Yeah, yeah I am. I definitely am. I'm, I'm bringing stuff up fairly regularly, but I'm you know, kind of teetering on the edge of not wanting to push her over one side to get her her emotional side to engage. I want to Honey, try to what you think is being back. nice is not nice. You think you're, mm -hmm. you think you can beg and be sweet and cause this to happen. And it's, I, I'm not asking you to be mean to her, but you're acting mm -hmm. like that you can beg her into wanting to do this. She has to stand up, square her shoulders and say, I'm going to re-engage in this marriage and re-engage as two adults on how to run our household. And she has to do that under the heading of a therapist. And the two of you learn to work together again. You cannot yeah, beg agree. her to behave. Yes, I agree with that totally. It's, you know, I, I, she, I can't change her. She has to decide to yeah. do it. And it's a matter of, you know, we're trying to get, you know, obviously lots of prayer and, and other yeah. friends of influence yeah. who had to get around her. Absolutely. To change her heart and soften her Absolutely. Up. What Dave's saying is this is an emergency. I'm and just you're saying sitting around you, need, you guys going, need to be well, sitting with a counselor and, yeah. and, and she needs to be going. And if she's not going, then we need to know what that, we need to admit what that says. Yeah, okay, yeah. but all this, there is not a financial technique that's the problem here. The, the no, financial well, problems problem, and the though. financial spending are all about her obstinance and you trying to talk, talk your way around it to where it's all somehow okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It doesn't work that way. And so if uh, Whitney uh, decided to start, just start telling George what she was going to do. George would have a thing, have a thing where, you know, here's what we're going to do. I don't tell Sharon what to do. She didn't tell me what to do. We sit down, we talk about it like two adults. We devise a plan on how we're going to do the calendar, how we're going to do the budget, how we're going to live our life. We work together towards common goals. This is called a quality relationship in your marriage. Uh, but when people start throwing it around, they're just like, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And you know, they get the all, all head bobbing thing going. And you shouldn't have got married. Then it's, you know, you, you've, you've got a mess on your hands and you've got to go back and try to try to learn how to be married. And, and it, that takes both people. And you can't beg someone to behave. You cannot control someone else's behavior. Your behavior is the only thing you can control. And you put it in a situation to go, if you do this, then you're choosing to opt out. If you do this, you're choosing to opt in. But I can't make you choose. That's the only thing you can do is present options to her. But th this idea of I'm going to let her be go run our family and bankrupt us so that by being nice and letting her do stupid butt stuff that's going to ruin our family, then that and causes her to go to counseling. That's, that's, a, that's a false narrative. That doesn't work. That's, if the auspices for her going to counseling is so that it's because she got bribed, by you you putting up with a bunch of crap then that no that is not how you start rebuilding this thing so now you guys need you desperately both of you need to sit in the counseling counselor's room immediately or you're not going to make it and the spending stuff is just i'm not we're not going i'm not going along with it and if you, if you don't like it i'm just part of what we can talk to the counselor about or it's part of what we can talk to the divorce judge about one of the two we, it's one of the two but i'm not going along with this because it's not right. And I'm not suggesting you leave today. I'm suggesting that the two of you get into the counselor's office four years ago, but right now for sure. 
That's the only best option. Best time to plant an oak tree 10 years ago, next best time is today. Oh, yeah, that's a great quote. She sees him as basically a doormat at this point because she knows, well, I'm just going to do what I want. He's he's not going to tell me off. Yeah. He's not going to have the conflict. You you have to stop being scared that you're going to cause the marriage to end by by pushing the marriage to succeed. That's that. That's that is not going to work. It's not going to work. You're going to end up nowhere but bankruptcy court and divorce court at the same time. Oh man, sorry, I'm so going sorry. That. What a horrible thing you're going through. Yeah. I sure hope she comes around. I hope the two of you get in counseling, and I hope it saves your marriage. But you know, you participating in crazy is not going to make crazy go away. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your relationships, about your money, about your career, your job, about mental health. Whatever it is you want to talk about, we're here to help you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. John is with us. John's in Chicago to start off this hour. Hi, John. How are you? Hello, Dave. Thank you for all that you do. Let me say that first. Well, thank you, sir. How can we help? I don't. I can't think of a single program that, that affects people's lives so positively. Okay, my wife and I are business owners, and we work together and have for over twenty plus years. Let me uh, paint the scenario. You ask the questions you feel you need to know. Okay. We purchased about three acres of property. Uh, that the intent for this uh, acreage in the in the uh, end is that. Uh, we park campers and, and uh, RV vehicles. This is my retirement job. I'm never going to retire. I know that. She knows that. But I have to have a plan for something I can physically do when I get to be much older. So that's my physical toleration limit, I felt. Having said that, we bought the land. Uh, we bought it at about 4.2%. And we also rent garage space on another property. Now, we are always going. We were always going to build a, a steel building on the land that we owned, and move the business over there to avoid that rent. But here's the question that I'm not sure: If I build the steel building, it's going to cost me, let's just say, a hundred thousand dollars, and I'm going to build that steel building with cash, or do I take that hundred thousand dollars and pay off the loan for the land, and then? save up enough again to pay cash for the building, but then the whole time I'm renting the other one. So it's like this, uh, not sure what really the best thing to do is Mm. question. What's your income? That's kind of where I'm at. Um, Our business grosses. Now I know that's not your question, but if you don't understand our business, it is. We're going to personally net about 250,000 a year. Okay. All right. All right. Well, it sounds and, like you it sounds like you could build a building fairly quickly if you paid off the land. If I paid, yeah, if we paid off the land, I think we could build the building in another two years. So maybe well, I think a you could build it faster than that. It's only a hundred thousand dollars. Right. I understand exactly what you're saying, but we uh, we've gotten rid of all of our debt except we do have uh, uh, less than a hundred thousand left on our original mortgage, and we have one vehicle. But we were the in, just in two years we were the first pig. Now we're looking at the third pig. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, what did you say about you, you have a car debt? 
Yeah, we have one truck in the business. All the other trucks are paid for. All the other equipment's paid for. Okay. We have one truck in the business. And then um, we don't have any other retail debt. We don't have any credit card debt, nothing like that. So just how much do you owe on the truck? Uh, about 35000 Okay. And, how, and you have how much in cash right now? Our, we have cash of about 20000 Where was the 100000 going to come from to build the building? In the contracts that were in pl- that are in place now for our business, we have several years of contractual work. So it's future that revenue. Going to make us future revenue. That's correct. Okay. So you were just going to cash flow it, is what you're saying? Oh my gosh, our cash flow is just insane now. But that okay. creates a problem that you have to be more aware of. You know, you can get lazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's on the mortgage? Your primary? Yeah. Yeah. So 90, yeah. about ninety nine thousand. Okay, and then you also have a hundred thousand owed on the land. Uh, we have about 150 on the land. We okay. paid the land down about 25% okay. in the last few so years. So 35 on a truck, 100 on right. your house, and right. 150 on the land. Yes. And a 250 income. Yes. Okay. All right. What I would do is and about 20 and about 20 in cash. Your shortest distance between where you are and wealthy is to become debt free. Okay. And then cash flow, whatever. And along the way, you're cash flowing the business, but you're also cash flowing whatever needs. So I'm going to get the truck paid off as soon as I can. I'm going to get okay. uh, I'm going to get my house paid off as quick as I can. Then I'm going to pay off the land, and then I'm going to build the okay. building with cash. Got it. Do you have an emergency right. fund, or is that 20k it? Yeah, that's what the 20k is. And and we just weren't sure if paying rent was really the best thing to do during yes. all this time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you rent because you're, a, because you still have debt. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a good answer. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, He's surprised. That's the. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the. The thing is, this you, you get caught up in the. It's like, um, you know, it's it's the same dichotomy that people say. Well, I pay six hundred dollars. I pay sixteen hundred dollars a month in rent on my home, so I might as well buy a house because the payments are only 1700 you know and and th- they're not the same they're not the same that's a fa- again it's a false narrative that people use to justify or to rationalize buying a house when you're not ready to buy a house because you're broke and so um well the payments the same yeah but home ownership's more expensive than non home ownership so and and the the ret- let's throw it 100,000 dollars in the middle of the table all it's going to make you is the saved rent, the fact that you don't have to rent the thing anymore, the building. If you used it to build a building, so your return on that 100000 is not 100000 in one year. So it, it takes a while for this stuff to work out, and I, I kind of know that because I've done that here. I mean, I've dumped uh, a couple of hundred million dollars into this campus that, um, that this, this company then rents back from me, but, uh, but it's... Uh, you know, the rate of return is good, uh, reasonable uh, on the money invested, but it's not like I get that money back every year that I put into this. I, it'll be years and years and years and years before I get that money back out of this place. Yeah, I, I own an asset, but it's not, you know, it's not like, okay, you build a $100,000 building and it saves you $100,000. It doesn't, it's not, it'll be years before they break even on that. So that's, that's what you're And doing make. the math on, okay, if we free up that truck payment, then we free up your mortgage payment. And you make two hundred fifty k. Yeah, ding ding. Now there. we can save up and buy that steel building like nothing, and pay yeah. off the pay off the acreage. So if I were in your shoes, I would cut my lifestyle down to nothing. I'd pay off my house and my truck this year, and I pay off the building or the land the next year, and I build the building the next year. Now the question is, he's got twenty k there. That's his emergency fund, but he's also got the cart. The I don't. Truck I there. don't know what he's doing with the business. So I'm a little bit worried that that business having no cash at all. Could running put a two hundred fifty thousand dollars top line, our, our gross profit or whatever he's running there. So I'm um, on his, at home. I'd take him down to a thousand, but in the business, I might let him have some retained earnings. So I just kind of left that alone uh, in, in this scenario. If it would have paid the truck off completely, I would have. I might have reached over and grabbed it, <laughs> but I'm going to let it sit there for now and use this cash flow to clean this mess up. If I'm him. John, thank you. Thank you for being a listener, and thank you for your kind words. We appreciate it. This is The Ramsey Show.
if you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. personality is my co-host. I am so excited. Smart Conference is back this fall. October 22nd, we're bringing this world-class event to Dallas, Texas. You're going to spend a whole day getting smarter. We're going to give you the tools and the inspiration you need to be smarter in every area of your life. You'll go home believing you can meet your goals. You can build wealth. You can grow as a leader. You can heal from mental health and relationship struggles. You can get the job of your dreams. We're bringing the best teachers and thought leaders. Joining me will be Ramsey Personalities, Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, George Camel, Christina Ellis, Pedro Latore, and special guests Craig and Amy Groeschel will be there speaking on marriage. Craig is the uh, pastor of LifeChurch.tv over in Oklahoma City, the largest church in America today, and he is an incredible, he and Amy are incredible communicators. So this is going to be an incredible all-day event, Smart Conference, October 22nd in Dallas. Uh, the early bird prices are gone. Tickets are selling very rapidly. The Smart Conference traditionally sells out very fast. It's been a while since we've done one because of all the garbage we've all been through, but now we're back at doing live events again big time and excited about it. We miss doing them. We miss being out there in these cities with you guys. George, this is going to be fun. It's legitimately my favorite event, and I learned so much. I'm out there in the crowd taking notes because these powerhouse speakers are just bringing su such inspiration, motivation, education. And so I want everyone to be there. It's a party. I mean, you get, you know, six, 8,000 people in a room after what we've been through the last few years, and we're just celebrating. We're having a great time. Well, and we're, you're going to leave just exhausted and smart. That's simple. It's drinking from the fire hose. That's it, man. It's a taste of everything we do here at Ramsey Solutions. So RamseySolutions.com slash events, October 22nd in Dallas. Get your tickets now. Uh, before they are gone, it will sell out early. Uh, again, you've seen the football games on television and everything else. Things are selling out quickly and easily these days, and you do not want to miss this. Go ahead and get your tickets now at uh, RamseySolutions.com slash events. James is in Michigan. Hi, James. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, uh, how are you guys today? Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so I, I first want to say thank you. Um, I had a nasty divorce two years ago. That's when I discovered you guys, everything you do. Um, I went from a, a camper payment and a furniture payment all the way down to uh, baby step five, saving uh, 15 per kid and a 529 plan. Wow. Um, so, yeah, again, thank you. Um, I, I guess my question is, um, I, I saw one unexpected uh, side effect of this was uh, my kids are very observant. My daughter is 14 now. My son's 12. Um, you know, I was getting all these questions, Dad, why are you paying cash for this? Everyone uses their card, all, all these weird, weird things. So I've been kind of using that as a, as a learning opportunity for them um, to kind of set them up to manage money better when they're older. Um, now it's to the point where uh, my daughter, who is very ambitious, uh, wants to get her first job after school. Um, you know, good grades pending, of course. But uh, I, I really want to lead her in a way to where, you know, she could start saving now and just build these habits early. So I, I don't know how to go about this. Um, do, do the baby steps apply to a teenager? Like, do, do I set her up with a... Um, you know, like a custodial IRA, or what, what do you guys typically recommend for this sort of you know, situation? 
Well, wow. I think it's awesome that you're doing that and that she's seeing this stuff going, I want to do this and not being pushed away from it. So, uh, you know, there's there's three things that you can do with money. And if she understands that, she's going to be okay. Give, save, and spend. And we've got her, you know, the, the junior piggy bank and maybe a little beyond her at her age. But if she can learn to make money and then manage said money by giving a little bit, saving a little bit, spending a little bit, she's going to be okay. Yeah, you don't have to get super sophisticated and do custodial IRAs or anything at this stage of the game for her to learn. Uh, George is exactly right. Let's just make sure she's building the muscles appropriate to a 14-year-old. Uh, you can invest some, you can uh, give some, and you can enjoy or spend some. And you need to do some of that out of each paycheck. And no, the baby steps do not apply to a 14-year-old. Uh, she's got a, she's got a place to live. She's got food. That's her dad's job. Uh, but she, her job is just to learn how to handle money and to build these muscles in these three areas. And then they can get progressively more sophisticated, but we're not trying to, um, I mean, when my, when Dave Ramsey's kids were 18, they could not tell you, uh, you know, super nerdy details about investments. They knew a general understanding of mutual funds, and they knew about generosity, and they knew about not spending money you didn't have. And that was about okay. it. And they, and, they, and they were ready to go to college with that. Now, you know, you could take it a little bit further if you want. I'll send you a copy of the book Rachel and I did, Smart Money, Smart Kids, which uh, is all about teaching parents how to teach them or how to teach their kids how to handle money. And it's all about age-appropriate um, you know, a three-year-old gets a different version of give, save, spend than a 14-year-old gets. But, uh, but yeah, I don't, you don't have to do a bunch of fancy, spancy stuff. It's just a matter of answer her questions, put the stuff in front of her. And, you know, if she'll learn to be intentional with the money she earns, that's a big plus. George is exactly right. And at that age, I mean, our, our Ramsey education team does a great job. Our personal finance curriculum is now in 48% of high schools. And so I don't know if they have that at, at her school. If not, we've got a homeschool course on our website that you can jump onto. But something like that could be a good resource for her if she does want to do a little more of a deep dive. Yeah, she might actually love going through that. Amy is in San Francisco. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. I'm shocked that I got through, actually. <laughs> I've called so many times. Well, I'm honored um, you did. How can we help? Okay. Well, a few months ago, I was searching on YouTube, um, and I typed in, uh, my husband controls all the finances, and I came across you. And since then, I've been binge listening to you and your daughter, Rachel, and I've learn been learning so much um, in changing many things, just really just learning and then making some pretty big changes. So I'm at the very beginning and just working on getting out of debt. Um, I've, I've been married for about 14 years and I have three kids and my husband and I are currently separated. Um, so my question is, it's kind of a relationship question, but also a financial It's, it's both. He's a financial advisor for um, Morgan Stanley, um, and we never combined our finances. We both came to the marriage with finances, and he bought our home a year and a half before we got married. Uh, and finances were always a really, really heated topic for him, and so I very ignorantly spent down um, my the, the separate money that I had coming into our marriage because I never had access to our community money, access to our community money. Um, and he was really resentful that I didn't have a job. And we had, three, we had our three kids kind of back to back to back. They're barely four years apart between zero and all three of them were born in four years. Um, How can I help and today? So honey? I'm just, I know. Um, I'm really just wanting to hear um, just what you would have to say to this situation. I'm I'm just super overwhelmed. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry for what you're going through. Um, this this guy's not a nice guy. No, he's he's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is if I do it his way. No, he you no, know, he has a mean streak, and uh, mm -hmm. he's he's very controlling, and he's not a nice guy. And it wasn't just money. Is everything else too, right? 
Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But it was money was always the trigger. Well, yeah. Yeah. So but that's it, that. It, it always is. It, it always is. It, yeah. The um. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. So um. You know, I, th- I think what you guys are going to have to decide is if you're if the marriage is going to stay together, and if it is, it's going to have a whole new set of terms, and that mm-hmm. is that we're going to be sharing everything, and we both get a vote. Um, you don't get the only vote. I don't think this guy's going to come to the table on that, so I don't I don't have a good. I don't think he is either. I I, so, I, so I don't think your marriage is going to continue. I think you have to learn how to what this looks like for you personally moving going forward. forward from here. Yeah. What's the future look like for you as a single mom? Uh, with huge child support and alimony from him. And I don't know what your rights in California are to this house that he owned prior to marriage. Your divorce attorney will have to tell you that. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America, in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Andy and Nikki are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Good. Yeah, doing good. Welcome. Where do you guys live? St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Well, welcome to Nashville. It's good to have you guys. So fun. How much debt have you paid off? Uh, We paid off $30,000. Cool. How long did that take? It took us five months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 110000 Okay, good. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. And I work in human resources. For who? A manufacturing company. Good. Good for you guys. Wow. Excellent. So what kind of debt was this 30000 It was uh, primarily student loans and a, a water filtration system for our home. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I love it. All right. Good for you guys. How long have you been married? 12 years. Okay, so what happened uh, five months ago? That you go, okay, we're not doing this anymore. We're cleaning this up. Boom, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, in the, probably the first year of our marriage, somebody told us about you know the Dave Ramsey plan and actually let us borrow a book and everything. And I kind of like on my own. I didn't read it. I just went to the how do I make a budget? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I used an Excel spreadsheet. I made us a budget. Um, and that was kind of, it just stayed on the Excel spreadsheet. and We actually did the envelope system. Yeah, we know, did the envelope a, <laughs> a little bit here and there. Um, we were not tracking all of our purchases. Mm-hmm. Um, we weren't counting all of our receipts. And mm-hmm. so we were, just doing we were a budget. loosely sticking to the budget and mm-hmm. paying extra on our debt. We always had debt. We had student loans. We had cars. Mm-hmm. Our entire marriage, we've had debt. So, yeah. And um, so la- um, last So summer, you were pretty much ish. Yes, yeah. exactly. And ish is a wish. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so I, what, I mean, what happened? I was what happened? doing it by myself. Yeah, but <laughs> so what happened that flipped it five months ago? Um, I uh, was mowing the grass and I wanted to listen to a new podcast. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, <laughs> started searching for something new, you know, and, and obviously you know, we knew who you were as, you know, growing up in church and everything. We've heard the name Dave Ramsey. I uh, just didn't know a whole lot about it. Um, I found the podcast just scrolling started listening to these debt-free screams and and just all the advice and and what your future can look like if you take hold of it and uh it was just very very eye-opening and i was convinced i just became very convinced that 
you know, we can be free of this. He was and like, we can be millionaires. Yeah, she I didn't was believe like, me. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the guy that just went to cut the grass? Yeah, so. I was like, we're already doing it. I'm paying extra on our student loans when mm-hmm. I can. So. Right. So, and, and she has been the number person. I'm not a numbers person at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and I brought this to her. We started listening to the podcast together. Um, decided that we were just going to do this. We we're going to get on board and, and start hearing all these stories of people just getting this intensity and, and fighting this battle basically just to, just to knock this out. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. this can happen. We should be able to do this. There's no reason we can't. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you just need that bigger why, that bigger vision of like, what are we doing? We're just looking at what's happening next week. We need to look at what could happen 10, yeah. 20 years from now. Well, it was that and we weren't doing as much as we could. We There was no gazelle intensity. It was just mm-hmm. like, we'll do extra here, like where we can. So it was. I want to retire. Yeah. <laughs> it was the long term vision and the intentionality. Yeah. yeah. So that got you guys fired. I mean, you went pretty hard at this. 30K in five yeah. months making 110. I mean, you, this was rice and beans. What were you yeah. guys doing? It, it, it didn't feel that way, actually. You know, I knew that we did have, um, you know, when we first got married, we were combined income 30 grand. You yeah. know, we were on some government assistance. You know, we had a baby, a six week old baby, hardly any money. You know, um, it was it was hard. Um, we had some in savings, too, that yeah. we were able to pour into it because we really weren't doing the plan. We had How much was in savings? savings? About twelve thousand. Okay, yeah. so twelve thousand, which left you eighteen to knock yeah. it out in in the five months. Yeah, that, that makes a whole lot more sense. I well, gotta I gotta ask, how much is a water filtration system these days? <laughs> and what's yeah, it worth? They it? range. They range. <laughs> we I think we financed about it was seven thousand. I think. Whoa. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah we might have got ripped sell, off. Those sales pitches <laughs> are very convincing. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So wow. never let them into your house. But it's gone now. So. <laughs> wow. You got rid of it or did you just no, pay it off? The debt's gone. gone. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. The debt's gone. No. We're keeping that, that good water. Oh, yeah, man. Right. That's right. It's important. Wow. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Yeah. How's it yeah. feel? Really good. Yeah, it feels very, very freeing. You know, um, you did this really fast, but very intense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was really important for me to kind of like connect this to like a spiritual truth. Um, and that like really gave me this like oomph behind it. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, this, uh, I, I really like um, what it says in the Psalms that, that God has determined the stars and called them each by name. And I, I thought, you know, when we can label in, in every single dollar and give every single dollar a name, just like the name of the app, and that's, that's what this is all about is taking every single dollar and uh, the zero point budget and creating that, um, you know, when we apply biblical principles to our practical lives, you know, I really feel like we reflect the image of God. So. Amen. Beautiful Amen. said. It's well done. It's well done. Yeah. That's what it took for me. I had to have the same exact thing because I had all the head knowledge and I still went broke, you know, because yeah. I was doing stupid butt stuff. And But I finally had to go, okay, this is God's ways of doing it. And the answer to everything else is no. That's the only answer is that way. And I, it was an act of faith and that, that flipped it. And the, I think the people that have the fastest most dramatic turnarounds have an element of spiritual spirituality and psychology and a, a relational shift in their marriage as well those three things come together it just pours gas on this whole idea and you can go you go right through it and you, and you and the thing about this is I, I don't even have to ask you this you'll never go back no there's nothing there's nobody that can sell you anything on that ever again it'll never happen uh, no. you're done you you I, but the, but the way you describe that that's yeah. that that's that's what goes with that package. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. know you you're not going to fall off the wagon. Yeah, so. and we had just totally agreed uh, the whole time. You know, I mean there was, you know, I was I was uh, selling plasma. <laughs> I was uh, doing some Uber <laughs> and on the side, you know, a little bit. So I taught know. summer school for the first time in my career. Wow, <laughs> yeah. right. so, you guys got after it. Yeah, yeah. very got cool. It done. That's awesome. Well, we're very proud of you. Who was your biggest cheerleader outside the two of you? Yeah, so definitely um, my wife's parents, and they're here with us today. Yay! Um, you know, where you go, Mom yeah, and Dad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and, uh, you know, we had some other support, you know, um, from just people who have done it, you know, someone from work, and, um, you know, her and her husband had gone through it and got debt free. And um, so that was uh, just good moral support, you know, friends that supported us. So Very cool. Um, good for you guys. How's it yeah. feel now that you're free? 
Awesome. Very, very good. <laughs> yep, never going back, that's for uh, sure. Amen. Amen. And you cash flowed those amazing t-shirts that say 321 we're debt free too? Yeah. Yep. Okay. She makes them. Made them yep, she made them. Okay. <laughs> hey, there we go. Yep. All right. <laughs> Crafty. Yep. This is cool. It, it really has enabled us to, um, you know, I'm going to go back to school for my master's degree and so just, just to cash flow that. Yeah. Uh, it's not something I ever thought I'd be able to do. To, you know, pay cool. For school with cash. What are you going to study? Um, mental health counseling. Oh, wow. Um, awesome. Love it. Good for you. Well done, man. Well done. Yeah. All right. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. Uh, that's the next chapter in your financial story for sure. You've done an incredible job. And we've got a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody and stir them up and get them going. You brought the kiddos with you. What are their names and ages? Let's bring them into the shot. This is. Yes, we have Noah. He's 10. Mm -hmm. And Tenley is 6. All right. Everybody's got the t shirts on. Adorable. Everybody's ready to rock and roll. I love it. Way to go, you guys. Andy, Nikki, Noah, and Tenley from St. Louis. 30000 bucks paid off in five months, making 110. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. free! Wow. Look at that. A lot of smiles over there. A lot it of debt-free faces. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of a lot awesome t-shirts. What a pretty cool couple there. They got a lot. They got a bright future ahead of them. A lot of good stuff about to come their way. Going on for the Masters Living the Dream, man. It's amazing. And they'll be millionaires, too, before oh, you know it. They will be. They'll hit that goal. You're right. This is The Ramsey Show. George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Ted is with us in Boston. Hi, Ted. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? So, I have a question for you. I'm going to be starting medical school in August, and I just wanted to know your opinion on how I should go about my finances in regards to like what I have saved and how much loans I should take out during the next four years. Okay. Um, well, you don't have a long run, a long runway here. It's pretty much here, huh? Yep. So, so uh, how much money do you have to pay for medical school? So, in the beginning of August, I'll have projected about 150k saved up. And uh, what do you project your budget for medical school is? So, tuition is going to be around forty-three thousand a year, and cost of living will be about thirty-three thousand a year projected. So you're okay. talking about 76 per year? More or less, yeah. How many years? Four. Four, Four total? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and will you have any income during that time? I mean, I'm, it depends on how I do. I'm, I might be able to do like a shift here or there a month, but I'm not really counting on working. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get the 150? Um, uh, I'm 26, so I've been working since more like 22 years old, so I've just saved up. Wow. Mm hmm Okay, so you're um, seventy-five thousand shy, right? Did I do that right? Uh, no, I didn't do that. For right. a year. So he needs about three hundred thousand. He's got one hundred fifty. Yeah, you're about one hundred fifty thousand shy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, uh, so well, you know, we don't we don't tell people to take out loans here on this show, and so I, I'm going to be scrambling and figuring out a way to find that other money, whether it be scholarships or fellowships or um, MD, PhD programs or whatever they are, whatever you can get into, 
Um, how much of that four years are you in residency? So the way med- medicine works is you do four years of medical school, which is straight school. You're paying tuition. You're not making a dime. After you graduate your four years, then you do your residency. And depending on the specialty you choose, it's anywhere from three years to seven years. Right. Okay. All right. And so, you know, your plan right now is to come out with $300,000 or $150,000 in student loan debt. Is that your plan? So, yes, I just don't know what's the best way to go about it. I'm considering just keeping my 150000 in investments. And just letting that sit over the next four years and just taking out loans over the next four years? Absolutely or, not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely Green. not. That's effectively borrowing money to in, uh, on student loans to invest it. No, absolutely not. No, you're, 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 that makes you $300,000 in student loan debt. No, that's, that's suicide. No, I'm, I'm definitely using the 150, the 150 until it's gone. And during that period of time, I'm going to be trying to figure out a way to come up with the rest of it so there's no loans. Okay, so drain the whole hundred fifty. Oh, absolutely, before. absolutely. I mean, if you can, if and, you scrounge and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my dead gum lifestyle down. I mean, thirty three thousand a year for lifestyle while you're in school—that's a little steep. Yeah, I know he's in Boston, which is my hometown, but I think you can you can shave that down. I don't care if you live with five dudes, whatever you have to do to shave down that cost, because that is something that is in your control uh, to an extent. And so I'm gonna be like Dave said, going for those scholarships, grants. Whatever you can scrounge up there, I'm going to be working a little bit. I mean, you can do some work, especially you're not in school, you know, 40 hours a week. You're studying, obviously. There's still summers. There's things you can be doing to bring in, you know, 10, 20 grand a year. The other thing I'm going to do is do everything I can to find scholarship money. Uh, it's a little, it's a lot harder to find scholarship money for graduate work or med school or law school. But we have talked to many people over the years that have found it and have done it. And I would. Uh, I definitely would. I'd make that my thing. So, man, and absolutely, listen, what what your question does, it scares me to my bones because it tells me that in your mind you've normalized this level of student loan debt, and it's not normal. It's financial suicide, and it takes years to undo these kinds of mistakes. Uh, and, and so – And with this kind of time – By the way, everyone that, that starts med school doesn't finish – and everyone that finishes does not become a rich doctor. Uh, this is mythology in this current world that we live in. And so the set of assumptions that allow you to go $300,000 in debt in your mind, and that's all okay, is a really dangerous narrative. You're setting yourself up for all kinds of problems. Alex is with us in Nashville. Hey, Alex, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey there, Dave. I'm so thankful that God uh, graced us with you and your team, the ministry that you all have. We appreciate you so much. And George, uh, hang on there. The uh, YouTube trolls, don't listen to them. You're killing it, brother. I appreciate the encouragement. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> hey, I'm a, I'm a 27-year-old pastor in the Nashville area. Uh, my wife and I, we have one one child who's almost two, and uh, we're in baby step two. We have a very significant amount of debt, uh, $107,000. And uh, we paid off a significant amount since December, but we are seeking um, – I, I want to seek wisdom from you guys on if it is the right time for us to have a second child. We really want a second child, but yes. we are gazelle intense on baby step two. Yes. So uh, – It's always okay. the right time to have a baby. It's uh, always the right time. Okay. Babies are awesome. There's nothing better. We just know, obviously – the only time, the only time our, I tell you no is if you gave me these same numbers and said you already had eight kids, I'd tell you to, t- to take a chill pill and let's let's get the debt paid off. But you got one baby and another one on the way. I don't. We do not tell people to stop life because of debt. Uh, you know, not we don't tell young couples not or couples to not get married because of debt. We don't tell people to not have babies because of debt ever. Never have in thirty years of doing this show. Uh, those are decisions between you, your spouse, and God, and. Um, you know, the, the fact that you're aware that you're bringing a child into this situation and that, you know, with two little babies, you guys are going to have to really keep the fire burning and uh, and get this debt knocked out means you're going to be okay, Pastor. You're going to do great. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. What's your household income? My wife's going to love you even more. Uh, 102000 Okay. You're going to do fine. It gives me some hope here. Yeah, you're now, it might slow down the snowball if you're going to save up during, you know, stork mode and make sure baby's okay right. and all that. But 
other than that, you're going to pay off this debt. It's not going to delay you by that much. Yeah. I was just concerned that the shovel might have to be repurposed a little bit. It will. You know? It will. But it's not It's not a deal breaker, and it's not going to mean you're in debt a decade longer. It's going to mean you're in debt four months longer or something like that. Right. Whoopty. Right. Whoopty. Babies are a big deal. Yeah. I'm just the Dave guy that wants to be out of debt yesterday. So Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, and uh, babies are the best thing you can do. So, you know, uh, they're they're. You know, it's and the, no, they're the second best thing. The best thing you can do is grandbabies. Oh, yeah. If I'd have known how great grandbabies are going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. But yeah, this is uh, this is what you ought to do for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You get to have all the fun and spoil them That's without right. having load to load them up with sugar, send them home. Or if you pick it up and th- say this one smells bad, hey, this one smells bad. You're going to have to break fix it. This one's broken. Diaper change. I can't, I can't fix this one. This one's got a problem. Take them, Rachel. It's so awesome. Just hand it right back. Hey, Rachel, come here. Get your kid. Yeah, this is great. It's fun. It's a blast. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. But it's an interesting concept because we usually tell people stay gazelle intense. But when it comes to still living your life and getting married, we get that one a lot too. Yeah. Should I wait to get married because of debt? Should I be debt free before I'm married? Or should I, you know, I've had people, you know, like, I'm not going to marry him until he pays off all his debt. No, no, I don't, I don't want to marry you if that's the case, you know, so no, that's not, listen, if, if you're not in agreement, then don't get married. But if you're in agreement about we're going to get rid of this and then we're going to build wealth and we're going to work together, then you've got a marriage. You know, but you don't have to wait till you're out of debt to be married. That's just not true. You as still got to have a plan. We're going to work together to accomplish these goals. That's all it is instead of a part. And you're actually going to make more progress and progress faster. But, yeah, um, Rachel was born the year we filed bankruptcy. So mm-hmm. we don't uh, we've never planned babies around money. Um, within reason. I mean, again, if it's an extreme situation, but but uh, within reason, I, um, I I just don't put that as part of the equation. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Good hour, George. Thank you. Nice job, Kelly and Jenna and Ben in the booth. The booth people are lined up in there. Even Zach's in there. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? It's your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. We're going to take your calls about your relationships, your work, your career, your money, uh, and your life. It's all right here on The Ramsey Show, and we thank you for joining us. There's about 22 million of you out there. Thank you for that. Uh, We are the uh, fifth largest podcast in the world right now, which is kind of mind-blowing. We're the second largest talk radio show in North America uh, by any measure. And uh, absolutely because of you guys. And we appreciate you. We appreciate you being there. Our YouTube channel is uh, unbelievably successful. We've got these gold buttons and silver buttons around here that mean we've had a bazillion listeners and viewers there and downloads and everything else, all these YouTube awards. And it's all because of the numbers of you that are out there. And we're so honored by that. And we appreciate that. Um, If you want to do us a favor, tell other people. That's the biggest favor you could do it. Spread the word. Say, hey, listen to this podcast. Listen to this talk radio show. Watch this on YouTube. 
and uh, George and I would, would appreciate that, and the folks at Ramsey would appreciate that. Spread the word. That's how life change happens, I found. It takes a friend going, hey, you got to check this out. Yeah, check this guy out. And, uh, you know, we'll do the talking for you. You don't have to talk them into it. <laughs> we'll talk them into it. We'll wear them down, baby. We've been doing it for 30 years. That's right. All right, Evan is with us to start off this hour in Iowa. Hi, Evan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and George. Uh, it's an honor to speak with you both. Thanks for taking my call, and thanks so much for all you do to help people. Well, thank you. What's up? Uh, so I, uh, about two years ago, I started to get after my debt. I started with $85,000 in student loan debt. And, uh, right now today I'm at 53,000. Um, and so after kind of getting on board, well, definitely getting on board with your principles about six months ago, um, I realized that the mutual fund I have, of uh, $20,000, I need to cash out. Um, I cashed out 5000 of that at the end of this past year, uh, leaving me 15 left in that mutual fund. And I was kind of waiting to see, um, to get closer to the end of the student loan pause to take the remainder of that out. But it's starting to dwindle uh, these past couple weeks with everything that's going on uh, in the world. And so I guess I'm just, my question is, should I pull it out right now? It's at 13000 or should I try to see if it's going to go back up and recoup some of that, some of that loss. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm in your shoes, there's some things I can control. And one of those things is not the economy and the stock market, but I can control right. paying down the student loan debt as much as I can right now. And so I'm cashing it out because I just don't know the future. Okay. Here, here's the swing, Evan. Okay. The, the likelihood that that student loan goes up 10% in just a few months is very low 10% mm -hmm. in a year maybe that wouldn't be unusual right. but 10% in a couple of months would be highly unusual 10% of 13,000 is 1300 dollars we don't have a 1300 right. dollar discussion we have a 53,000 dollar problem 1300 dollars right. one way or the other does not make or break this discussion okay so what yeah, happens I, is... I, I have the feeling that's what you're going to say. Yeah, I do this all the time, and that's why I recognize it when other people do it. Here's what we do. We start running math numbers, and we start looking at percentages, and we forget to look and say, okay, there's a $53,000 problem, and I'm over here trying to manipulate $4 somewhere, or $1,300, right. an insignificant amount of money compared to the size of the problem in order mm -hmm. to somehow get an edge on this problem, where if I had taken that same level of energy and said, okay, I'm going to cut my budget, I'm going to work six jobs, I'm going to not go out to eat, yep. I'm not going on vacation, I'm going to completely focus on this problem, and I'm going to punch this 53000 in the face so many times that it just falls over dead, then, you know, that's the deal. And so the secret sauce here. Evan, is your commitment and your energy and your visceral response to this debt, that is 95% of your solution. 5% of your solution is math manipulation. And, and so that that's what – I forget that because I'm a math nerd, and I'm always going to fix it with math. And most of the time it's not math. It's Dave. He's on the problem. Paper. On paper it looks great. But then life happens. So here's what I'm seeing on paper. If it helps you out, you've already paid off thirty-two thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. If you cash out the mutual fund, you're now down to thirty-eight. No, no, no. He's down, he went from eighty-five to fifty-three. So that's that's about a thirty-two. Yeah, so he's got. Oh, oh, yeah. He goes down to thirty-eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, so then right. he'd go down to thirty-eight. Now I can see the light at the end of the tunnel because he goes. Yeah, I've done this before. Yeah, Three thousand dollars a month. You're done in a year. Boom. Boom. And you start to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. momentum and is more And then you start finding that money. You said, you know, I go get that different thing. I, I, I change this around, and that's how it works. So that's the weird thing about personal finance is it's usually not a math problem. It's usually a focus and intentionality problem, uh, a, a sacrifice problem, a uh, commitment problem. Uh, it usually falls in those categories, and that, that's what changes everything. So this that's just a great call, Evan. It's a really, really... Good question, because it exposes the things that most of us do where we place our our energies or our, tr you know, we, the, we, we think something's a solution that's not. Mm. And so it's like, okay, I, you know, I'm going to refinance my credit cards from 18 down to 14. Okay, how much do you have in credit card debt? $1,000. You just save $4. 
sometimes the you math just helps. changed your life. Yeah. You know, it's just you didn't say you might, why why did you can't even pay for the stamp to fix this? I mean, you probably wouldn't use a stamp, but oh my gosh, you know, I mean, it's just that that's wow. But this is a good it's a good point because with the stock market and investing, when you're up five percent. 10%, you go, well, i got to keep waiting. And you start to get a little bit a little bit greedy. Like mm-hmm. you're in Vegas, and you're like, well, I'm up. Mm-hmm. I'm doing well. Let's keep riding this thing out and see how it goes. But that's not the problem. The problem is you, you're not making the extra percent. The problem is you're $53,000 in debt, exactly. and the payments are eating your life. Exactly. So you're, you got it, Evan. You got this. And, I'll, you, you, and I could tell by talking to you that you got it. And so I, I, I predict good things for you. Call us it's, back with a debt-free it's, screen. It's, uh, it, it's coming. It's coming your way. That's very cool. Personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. That means that here's how you become wealthy. It's 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. The mathematics of becoming a millionaire, sixth grade level. Mm. Sixth grade level. It's called compound interest. It's not a calculus formula. It's not a trigonometry formula. The Pythagorean theorem is not involved. What a waste of learning that was. The twerp in my mirror, however, is the biggest issue. If I can get that boy to behave, he can be skinny and rich. You'll get there. We'll get there. You're you're one for two. (laughs) Too soon. Uh, You look great. You're fired, Jordan. Okay. This is the Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host. If you're wondering whether to buy or sell a home this year, we've got some answers. You can expect the market to be a lot like last year with prices still on the rise, but interest rates are expected to go up too. So what can you make of all this? Well, if you're buying a home, you might be up against some heavy competition, some big price tags, and if you want to sell your home, chances are it'll sell quickly for top dollar. Of course, this all depends on where you are because every real estate market's different. But to win in any market, you really have to know what you're doing. This is not amateur hour. So you need to work with someone who knows what they're doing. You need an experienced, high-octane, high-protein real estate agent at your fingertips, and we've got that for you. We've done the vetting, we've done the due diligence, and we've lined you up with endorsed local providers. As Ramsey Trusted Pros, they care about your values, and they keep more money in your pocket. You're going to get the most for your house if you're selling. You're going to not pay too much if you're buying. They're going to coach you, walk with you. They know what they're doing in this weird real estate world that we're in today. Check out RamseySolutions.com slash agent. We'll connect you with a Ramsey Trusted Pro who can help you navigate your local market. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. 
Our question today comes from Blinds.com. They're the number one online retailer of custom window coverings, free samples, free shipping. And with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Kim in Arizona. She says, my husband wants us to help his daughter purchase her grandmother's home for $60,000. His motivation for doing this is he wants her to move close to where we live. She was just let go from a job for tardiness and has $14,000 in debt. She just got back from an expensive vacation and doesn't even have enough for the down payment on this house. How can I convince him this is a very bad idea? Wow, the art of persuasion. That's a, it's a difficult one. I don't know that you can convince him of anything. It sounds like he's made up his mind that his daughter needs to have this house regardless of her financial situation, which is a bad place to be. So uh, Kim knows this is a bad idea, but she's asking, how do I get him on board with the fact that this is not the time for her to purchase this house? There is a few times in my life I have been an enabler, but a whole bunch of times in my life doing financial coaching, I have run into people who are enablers, whether they're enabling someone that's an addict or they're enabling other bad behaviors. Enablers, which your husband is, Kim, is are, are the nicest people. They want to help. They're very sweet people. If you're an enabler, I know this about you. You're a kind, gentle, compassionate. You're not a grouchy person. You're a sweet person. Because enablers always are, they, and they always feel like they want to help. And he wants his daughter close to him. That's sweet. And he wants to help his little daughter. And he's helped her a lot over the years to the point that she's basically useless. He's helped her so much that she has no character. She can't seem to show up at work on time. She's a grown-up who can't even scrape together the money for this. I mean, you know, he, he's created a mess. And the thing, the, Kim, the only thing I've ever been able to do with enablers, because they are convinced that they're helping, and they are helping people do the wrong things, uh, and they're the sweetest people, is I just tell them, I just say, you know, you're so sweet. You need to realize, though, that when you think you're helping, you're actually hurting. So, honey, I, I, I don't think you should bring harm to your daughter. I think you should love her enough to not bring harm to her and to participate in her craziness, to participate in her irresponsibility and encourage it by financing it is bringing harm to her. She needs to learn to keep a job by showing up on time, get her freaking work done. And the fact that she can't do that is because you've done this with her her whole life, because you've helped her so much that she has no character. She has no bones inside of her character. And so, honey, you're not helping. You're hurting. You're bringing harm to her because you're not doing anything except going. She's not going to get better because you did this. Um, now, the goal is for her to live closer to them. And the grandmother's house. That. And the grandmother's home is in the deal, too. Which so there's also some emotion. Sentimental value here. Emotion and sentimental value. So here's what we could do that I think would be good for uh, his daughter is to say, um, okay, here's what we're going to do. If you do these three things, I'm going to help you. But I'm not going to do them for you unless you do these three things. One is you get four jobs and you start working 60 hours to 80 hours a week. You will not die from hard work. Just before you die from hard work, you pass out. So you will not die from hard work. You're going to be okay. That's science. It's, uh, it's science, yeah. And uh, it's brain science. And so uh, you're going to be okay. I want you, and number one. Number two, you're going to go through Financial Peace University. And you're going to graduate in, in a week. You're going to binge watch the videos and you're going to go through them and we're going to discuss them together. Um, and number three, with all the money that you're making, you're going to save all of it. You're going to spend none of it on stupid butt stuff because you need to come up with a down payment really, really quick. And if you do that for 60 days, I'll help you get this house. But if you don't do that, I'm not going to help you get this house. Mm, and so what like you're that. doing there is you're encouraging her. And, and you know, I'll even add one more. I'll pay off half of your debt, your fourteen thousand dollar debt, after you pay off the first half. Get some skin. I'll match. In the game. I'll match you. You put a thousand on it. I'll put a thousand on it. You put two thousand on it. I'll put two thousand on it until it's gone. That gets rid of the fourteen thousand dollars worth of debt, and then then we'll help you get Grandma's house. But um, but she's not going to be able to keep Grandma's house. She's going to lose Grandma's house. She's going to get foreclosed on if you go into it this way. 
So the only thing I've ever been able, the only way I've ever been able to get an enabler to stop enabling is to convince them that they're actually bringing harm because an enabler can't stand the idea that they would be hurting someone because they're sweet people. And if I can finally convince them that they're causing harm rather than helping, that their version of help is actually harmful, then um, that's that's the deal. Sometimes kicking someone's butt's the best thing you can do for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially so mom, if it's you your know, daughter. it's moms and dads with grown kids in their basement. I mean, um, listen, an eagle that doesn't leave the nest eventually is known as a turkey. And so you you know you've got to help them leave for their sake. You're not helping them. You're hurting them. You're bringing, you got a 36 year old in your basement. You've brought them harm. They're emotionally stunted in their growth. Their ability to function in the culture is, is stunted because you've, you brought them harm and you thought you were helping providing that you're still continuing to do their laundry, mm. you know, and, and it's just, and that's not, well, Dave, that's tough love. You're just tough. It's not tough love, honey. That's love. It's, it's love to allow people to live out their best life, create a sustainable th- situation with dignity. That's empowering. That's love. That's real love. Yeah. And, uh, you know, toxic love is I'm going to keep you around so I feel better. Ugh. And let me continue your misbehavior. That's enable. That's enabler language. What about what about this plan? What if she could rent grandma's home since she's broke mm-hmm. and eventually it can be hers? Well, it depends on who she's renting it from. I don't know the ownership level. We don't have yeah. that information if here. Da- if dad has to buy it and rent it to her, that's a bad. She's point. not going to pay the payment, and then he's not going to throw her out. Because now we're just we just evicting set up- your daughter. That's awkward. Well, we just it is awkward, but it, you're also setting her up to lose because she knows she's not going to pay the payment. She knows he's a pushover, an enabler. Mm. Same thing, and yeah. So she she knows this, and so she knows exactly where they stand. So no, you can't you can't put her in there with him as the backstop. Because him backstopping her has been the issue. But, but you know, the truth is, Kim, your husband is a kind, nice man. He really is a good person. He's sweet. He really is a sweet person. And I'm not making fun. I'm not being sarcastic. I really do think he is. He has just defined the word help wrong. His definition of help is not accurate. You're not helping. You're harming when you give a drunk a drink. You didn't help the drunk. You feel better because you feel like you did something and you thought you were nice and you didn't create conflict. But you didn't help. You brought harm. When a drunk continues to be, in a, to, to be a drunk because you helped, that's the definition of harm. Toxic generosity. So that's yeah, what it is. That's a definition of harm. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. 
Seth and Kristen are with us. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Good to have you guys. Where do you guys live? Elkton, Tennessee, about 45 minutes south of here on the Tennessee-Alabama border. Down towards Huntsville. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Well, welcome to Nashville. You not, not, a, not a bad drive up at all. No. Actually, it probably took you less than if you'd driven from Nashville. Yes. <laughs> I, I work here, so. Oh, okay. Even easier. All right. Welcome. How much debt have you guys paid off? About 100000 Very good. How long did this take you? Um, longer than it should have, and that was my fault. <laughs> um, it took about four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, when we first got married, we got really intense. We got rid of the credit cards. We didn't have any debt or anything. Mm -hmm. um, we both took side hustles working at a pumpkin farm for somebody that we knew and paid off his car. Good. Um, and then we... Um, we worked for the next year and paid off my student loans. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we were kind of ish for about two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he kept saying, oh, let we your need foot off the gas. Yes. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. like, we need to do a budget. We need to do a budget. I'm like, no, nah, we live on less than we make. We save some each month. Why do we need a budget? And um, so then eventually she saw. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> well, then COVID hit and um, I was. Um, I'm a pediatric speech pathologist, mm -hmm. and our clinic was shut down for two months. Mm -hmm. And I was pregnant, and so then by the time we opened back up, I was on maternity leave. So I was out of work for several months. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, after kind of everything started opening up again, you had an event here called mm -hmm. What Now? Yeah. And we came to that. Yeah. You and were we, in the studio audience. It was a, we were. It was only yes. a couple hundred people down there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we went home that night, paid for the every dollar budget, and we got on board. And as soon as I went back to work, it was like game on. Okay. You finished <laughs> it up then. All yes. right. We got, we got you back on track. I like it. Yes. Yeah. The pandemic was the wake up call. It was. It was. Wow. I'm proud of y'all. Well done. <laughs> It's, it's, sometimes it's harder to return to something than it is just to go all the way through it. It, w it was a little so bit difficult. hard at first, but, I mean, use the Every Dollar app literally made a difference. I mean, we tried the cash envelopes, but we do grocery pickup and stuff that don't take cash. And mm -hmm. so it was harder to stay on budget for us that way. Mm -hmm. With the Every Dollar app, oh, my goodness. It's, I it in. <laughs> You're now yes. like an evangelist, but <laughs> right before that, you were saying, I was like, we don't need to do a budget. We live on less than we make. What was and the now turning our favorite point? thing's the budget. I know. Yeah. I'm confused. What was the turning point for you? <laughs> it was, well, it was, we looked at how much we made each month, and it was like, why are we not able to save more? Mm. Why are we not saving more and putting more towards the debt than what we do? And so... Um, Finally, it was like, okay, we did the budget. We made it so that we live completely off his paycheck because I went down to part-time after we had our son. We're going to send her to Congress. She can straighten them out. <laughs> Get them on an every dollar budget. She can straighten them out. I could. I Common could. dadgum sense. I yes. like it. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Good for you guys. So cool. So cool. How's it feel to be free? Really good. Yes. Really good. So the last thing to go with Sally Mae, you gave her her eviction papers? We did, yes. We got rid of both of our student loans, and we got rid of um, that car debt was the first thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a new car just recently. Pay cash for it. Yes. All right. I like it. Yeah, I think your name is a cuss word in car dealerships. I think it is. Yeah, did you bring know. it up? I got to know. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, I did. Yes, we I did. got really, really dirty looks. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, he, they were, you know, they, they were. They got confused that you were the customer with the money? I don't understand. Yeah. They, yeah. Were, they were not wanting to come down on the price that mm -hmm. we were willing to pay and we were like they're like we'll just finance the rest and we we're like we don't do that we follow Dave uh, no Ramsey <laughs> <laughs> that was their sign that we are not making money off of these people that's why they were angry yes yep. yeah I love it that's fun that's <laughs> cool what'd you buy what kind of car a uh, Mazda 3 yeah nice. sweet sweet good for you I'm proud of you guys <laughs> well you. done all right now that you did it you you uh, started you let your foot off the gas then you got back on and knocked it out. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Uh, don't give up. <laughs> I mean, Murphy is going to hit. It's going to happen. Mm. It happened to us last year. I mean, it was like we had saved up enough money to pay off his student loans, mm -hmm. had half of our emergency fund, and then we had a big plumbing repair. His other car went out, and we ended up having to buy another car. And it was just like boom, boom, boom. But we paid cash for all those things, and we just 
kept going. It mm-hmm. was like, okay, this set us back a couple months, but mm-hmm. we can still do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now you have a lot less emergencies now that you're not broke. It's Yeah, it's funny. I mean, once we had the emergency fund in place, it was like, Murphy stopped bothering us. Yeah. <laughs> he went next door. It's an odd thing that works that way. I like it. Very well done. Okay, so you brought the baby with you to we celebrate? We did, okay. yes. And, and we're, we're actually expecting another all one. Right. So. <laughs> all right. And so this is, uh, what is his name and how old is he? This Colin is, Sanders. This Colin. is Colin. He's 22 months. All right. And then this is Ray. She is due in August. All right. Oh. I love it. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I'm so proud of you. Very well done. We got a copy of the Baby Steps Millionaire's book for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. You're heading that way. How ordinary people built extraordinary wealth, how you can too. Also, a copy of Total Money Makeover. You can give that to somebody. When they start hearing about your story, they're going to want to do this. And you can show them how to do it that way and get it get it moving. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> Who was your biggest cheerleader outside the two of you? Um, I would say our families. Our, yeah, families. our families were very supportive. Um, I mean, I grew up in a family... They didn't exactly follow the Dave plan, but they knew. I mean, they were good with finances yeah. and everything, um, but they still use credit cards. I'm working mm-hmm. on them. <laughs> <But. You'll> get <laughs> there. Way to go, you two. Proud of you. Very well done. All right. It's Seth and Kristen and Colin, Huntsville, Alabama area, uh, southern Tennessee, to be exact. 100000 paid off in four and a half years. What a great story. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, you guys. Way to go. That's amazing. Love that. Anyone Beautiful. can transform. Even the budget haters. They can learn to love the budget. And more than that, I'd be an evangelist for it. Amazing. I mean, love it. I, that's, you're right. That's fabulous. The, the best pitch for the budget is keep more of your money. There it is. Once she figured that out, she said, we're working too hard. Where's our money going? We can keep more of this if we do the budget. If we make the money behave that we have. That's exactly right. Very well done. Good stuff. Roth is with us in, uh, where is this, Alaska? Yeah, Homer, Alaska. All right, good stuff. Let's see here. Where's the button? There it is. Hey, Roth, what's up? Hey, Dave. It's uh, William Roth. I just, uh, a commercial fisherman. I grew up fishing and owned been running my own boat since I was 18. I'm 25 right now, and I I had done a bad thing and upgraded boats. So I went from a 40 foot boat to a 56 foot boat, and I had to borrow another hundred thousand on it. Um, so my business debt is at 200, and my house debt. So my boat mortgage is at 200 thousand, and my house mortgage is at 120. And I'm wondering which do I pay off first? Boat. Pay off the boat first. Yep, yep. Okay. What are you making? What's your net profit a year? It varies because it's fishing. I know. Um, some years are two hundred, and other years are like fifty. Really? Yeah, it can it can really vary a lot. Uh, we've had more steady years as uh, things have kind of leveled off. Also, so what I've do you think you're going to make in the coming year? What would you guess you're going to make next year? I plan on making a hundred in the following year here, and with the bigger boat, I also expect an increase year to year, more steady as well. Okay, yeah, you need to live on nothing, man, to get this boat paid off. This thing's got you vulnerable. You're you're in a yeah. really risky situation. Really That's, risky. Uh, so the boat is what I would tackle first, and what's your uh, what's your reason behind that? Because it is a huge destabilizer for your business. This was a stupid move. And it, it, if you get if you get in a sideways and a cash flow problem here, this, this two hundred thousand dollar boat debt is going to take you out. And so I want to get rid of that. The house won't take you out. This will take you out. And I'm, it's the risk that's scaring me. And there's a lot more risk than you perceive.
Our scripture of the day, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no human mind has conceived the things God has prepared for those who love him. Anne Frank said, what a wonderful thought it is that some of the best days of our lives haven't even happened yet. Ah, I like that. Very cool. That's true. If all your good days are in the past, you're Uncle Rico. <laughs> Just reliving the memories. There you go. <laughs> Do a little Napoleon Dynamite Throw drop there. Yeah, just, just, uh, just in case. Just in case somebody wondered. All right. Hunter is in Austin, Texas. Hey, Hunter, how are you? Doing good, Dave. God bless you and what you guys do there. Thank you, sir. How can we help? Need some wisdom from you on short-term investment. A uh, little backstory quickly. My wife and I sold our home uh, after 10 years here in the Austin area. Uh, and as you know, it's a great market. And so we p- took an offer we couldn't pass up. So the question is, we immediately put our windfall a- into a CD uh, that comes up the term June 1st. And uh, we're, we're just biding our time for a little bit till we find a plot of land where we want to build the next house. We have no outstanding debt and we own all of our vehicles. So where should we park that sucker for the next 24 months or so? Well, there's uh, you're going to make nothing but lose nothing if you keep it parked in, you know, high yield CDs or something. But they don't even gotcha. pay, they don't even pay one percent. So it's it's a bit of a joke. It's like free parking. Yeah, you know. six tenths of a percent. Yeah, yeah it's it's just free parking. We're just going to park it here, and yeah. uh, we're not making anything, but we're not losing anything. And uh, if you want to take a little bit more risk than that, obviously you can move some of it towards the market. Um, but with the world uh, in in upheaval. It's a weird time to be playing market short term. Mm. I don't mind playing it long term. I'm not pulling anything out because of the world in upheaval. But parking stuff for 18 or 24 months, you, you might lose some money, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you got to be willing to take that risk to, in order to make a little bit of money. So it's just a matter of do you want to trade some risk for some money, uh, potentially, uh, or do you want to just be, you know, real calm and just park it? There's not a wrong answer. Um, how much money is involved? 175000 Okay. All right. And so if you lost 10%, you'd lose $17,000. Yeah. That would not keep you from building the house. No. If wouldn't. you made 10%, you'd make $17,000. Mm-hmm. And that's probably your that's probably your over and under. Right. Would it, yeah, and to your point, what what would you reckon you talking about? Index funds? Like yeah, I mean, I just drop fidelity? it into an index fund, an S and P five hundred index fund. I do that because I, but but the the difference is, is it doesn't mean I'm I can't build the house, you know, because of it or something, and, and so I can I can it's not going to matter. In, in my case, I'm a, uh, I'll give you an example. What I would be parking personally money in there for, for a short term like that would be, I'm parking it there until I find a piece of real estate I want to buy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so if I'm buying a, a, an expensive piece of real estate, a five or a 10% swing one way or the other, I, I'm not going to know within that what I'm going to pay for the real estate. Cause I'm, it's not a certain piece of real estate. It's not a certain target. So it doesn't matter if I make a little or lose a little. I, and I just do it just because I'd rather not make six tenths of a percent. But it, but it's also if, if it's going to steal your joy, if you lose ten thousand um, dollars, you know, then then just put it in a money market, put it in a CD. It's not that big a deal. You're not going to get rich because of this move, and you're not right. going to go broke right. because of this move. That's my point. You know, so I I you know just get kind of gauge out you know how you and your wife feel. Uh, I can tell you Sharon uh, would probably park it in a CD. My wife probably would just because she doesn't want to think about it. And me, I don't think about it when I put it in the index fund. So yeah. it's okay either way. you got to take into account how much anxiety is this going to cause exactly. me staring, watching exactly. it go up and down, up and down each day versus going, you know what? If it's, up if it's going to cause 10, you to, to watch the stock market and you usually don't, then don't do it. Yeah. Then don't do it. But I've got, you know, I've done this before when we were saving up for our house. And I remember you're kind of going, oh, gosh, I hope when I pull it out, it went up and you have that feeling of, oh, gosh, mm-hmm. am I going to lose money on this? And so if you really need it by a certain time and it's a short timeline, I like just parking it in the high yield savings account and calling it a day. Yeah, it's that that has, that works 100 percent of the time. <laughs> and no anxiety, which we could you're, all use less of that. And 100 percent of the time you're making no money. So it's it's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's the purpose of it. 
So good stuff. Sarah is in Chicago. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you. Um, so I started your program two years ago, and I have managed to pay off about $43,000 so far. Um, I took on a side job this year to get that going, and unfortunately, I always say I did not do the correct deductions, and now I have a $4,000 tax bill due. Oh! Um, yeah. <laughs> so my question is, is twofold. One, how do I make sure this doesn't happen again when the position I'm working is commission-based? And two, um, do I use my $1,000 emergency fund to go towards this? And is there like an extension? How do you pay? What are you, what are you making? What kind of money do you make? Um, on the side job? Period. Or just in total? Both. Uh, 86000 That's the, That's combined? That was combined, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's pretend that your hair is on fire because that's what <laughs> owing the IRS money is. And so we're yeah. going to go completely bananas between now and April 15th, and we're going to find $4,000. Okay. You haven't filed your taxes yet, right? No, I just started them last night, and yeah. then that's how I found out, wow, yeah. what happened here. Yeah, okay. I also may work with a tax pro because they can really help you bring down that tax bill, and so they'll make you the money back that they cost you. That's probably true, yeah. And to avoid in the future, <laughs> quarterly estimated payments is what you want to be making if you've got those side hustles, because I've been there, and that's something I learned along the way was, oh, that helps to pay them something, and you want to get as close as you can. So you got to be socking away 25%, 30% of that freelance side hustle income so that you don't have to deal with this again. Yeah, so when you make 1000 bucks on your side hustle, you set 250 aside for taxes. You withhold on okay. yourself. That's what George is saying. Okay. And then you're supposed to file a one-page piece of paper once a quarter called a quarterly estimate, and it's your estimated taxes, and you're supposed to go ahead and make the deposit for those estimated taxes. And then that way, you, what what amounts to is, is you would have put a thousand dollars a quarter aside last year, and so you would have been at break even, right? If you had done okay. that last year, so that's how you keep from that happening this year. As far as this, you cannot file an extension on taxes you owe. You can file an extension on the filing of the tax return, but the taxes are still due on April fifteenth, and if you don't pay them, you're going to be penalized and uh, and have interest added as well. And so I'm going to pay every dollar you can pay, even if you pay $3,600 and you only get penalized on 400 okay? So you pay okay. as much as you can scrape together. You, you scrape everything together just as hard as you can go, and you go on beans and rice, and you, I mean, you go bananas between now and April 15th and get a tax pro to help you calculate this. It'll be worth it. Silver lining, it's April 18th, so extra three days this year, Dave, she gets to save up. That's helpful. <laughs> Not much. I sense sarcasm. Thank you, George. And so, <laughs> yeah, uh, check RamseySolutions.com and click an ELP for taxes, and they'll sit down with you, help you do this. And even if your taxes are fairly simple, in your case, we want to make really, really sure. And they can help you set those quarterly estimates up, too, uh, so that you can learn how to do that. It's not complicated. It's not that hard to do. But, uh, but, but having somebody show you how to do it the first time is not a bad idea. It's worth a little bit of expense for professional fees to do that. And they may know some deductions that you can take from your side hustle, which will reduce your taxable income on the side hustle. Because basically your side hustle is self-employed income. Probably going to be filed on a Schedule C on your tax return. And uh, they may know some things you can put in there that George and I wouldn't know because we're not very good at taxes. So there we go. Good stuff. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Thanks to George Camel, to Kelly, to Ben, to Jenna, to Zach, to everybody in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream.